Good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. It is July the 3rd, 2022. We're getting ready to celebrate the birthday of this nation. Everyone be safe. Thank you for coming and joining us this morning. The service will start in just a few moments.
Good morning and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am Father Matt Addington. I am the assistant rector here at St. Francis. And behalf and on behalf of our um, clergy, Father Milton, who is away on sabbatical, Deacon Joe, our vestry, and our staff, we are most excited uh, that you are here with us this day. If you are visiting with us either here or online, please raise your hand so that we might welcome you more fully. If you are vi visiting with us online, simply type a note in the chat and let us know that you are with us and we can welcome you there as well. Um, at this point in time, if you are watching online, you will see a QR code on your screen. That QR code can also be found in your pew, uh, in your pew card um, in front of you. If you scan that code, it will give you access to our online service order and also a way to give. Um, by way of announcements today, we do have one announcement. Um, on July 17th, immediately following this service, in the courtyard, we will be having our second summer social event. So please mark your calendars and join us then. Also, as a part of the 10 a.m. service, during the service, uh, we will be commissioning our youth and some adults as they prepare to travel to Costa Rica on their mission experience. And so with that, let us take a moment to pause, to sit, and to be as we prepare to worship the living God. Continuing now with our service order on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribes, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us hear again these words from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, the last time I stood in this spot with you all was three weeks ago, and we were contemplating how to stand in the midst of God's Trinitarian love. It was Trinity Sunday. We discussed the unbearable. We talked about how there are different kinds of things unbearable. The unbearable can cause us to crumble, or it can bring us to tears of joy. That was three weeks ago. For me, that feels like three months ago. So much has happened. So much has happened in the life of our church since that time. We have laid to rest faithful members of this parish. We have celebrated milestone anniversaries. There was a shooting in an Episcopal church in Alabama. And we have heard Supreme Court decisions that are reverberating all over our country and the world. For some, that those court cases are overwhelming. It is unbearable. For some, they've crumbled under the weight of that decision, and for others, it's also unbearable because they are rejoicing with tears of joy. In all of these things, there has been rejoicing, and there have been moments where life has been changed forever. Today, in looking at everything that is happening in our world, this gospel lesson, maybe more than any other, speaks deep, deep truth to us this day on the eve of July 4th. On July 4th, 1776, our country was unsettled. Our country was divided. Our country was deeply divided. Divided. On July 4th, 1776, there was no Episcopal church. If you found yourself sitting in a church pew using a prayer book on that day, chances are you would have been considered loyal to the King of England, whether it was true or not. All persons standing in a pulpit on that day in that Church of England had sworn allegiance to the king and was considered extremely loyal whether it mattered or not. Our country, or I should say our colonies, were divided. One colony could choose to make one thing a law and another bordering colony could choose to make the exact opposite a law. We were divided, and it was a mess. Fast forward a hundred or so years. July 4th, 1861, all the way through July 4th, 1864, our country was once again divided. Perhaps more divided this time than a hundred years before. 
We killed each other by the hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands yearly. We killed three-fourths of a million people, our own people, over whether or not a person had the right to their own body. In today's terms, that percentage would be 7 million Americans dead. 7 million Americans dead. We killed a ridiculous number of people over an issue that present, prevented one person from living a freed life, a life where another could make their own choices about how they would choose to live. We killed our own brothers and sisters because one group of people, one group of people were thought of, of as less than and system and laws were put into place to keep certain groups of people under the law of another. Let's fast forward another hundred years. 1960, 1970, some of you lived it. Would you agree that our country was divided then? The Vietnam War, civil rights movements, the counter at the Woolworth not even five miles from here. The sit-in that started it all. The Watts riots in Los Angeles, race riots in Detroit, Chicago, and New York. Systems in place once again to keep one group of people from making choices about how they might be able to live their lives. Both sides once again killing each other, each side believing they had the moral and religious high ground. We don't even have to fast forward another hundred years to bring us to today, to bring us to tomorrow. July 4th, 2022. What might tomorrow look like? I would imagine it would look a lot like today, a lot like yesterday, a lot like the past few months and the past few years. There are certain parts of our community that will fly the American flag proudly, and that's okay. There are other places in our state that will fly the Confederate flag. In fact, I have driven through our state on the 4th of July, and in certain places, you will see more Confederate flags than you will see American flags. You will see more Confederate flags than you will see American flags. Some will fly flags with blue lines on them and red lines on them. Some will fly their Trump 2024 flags on July 4th. And others will be so ashamed and so embarrassed and so confused and frustrated that they will fly no flag. July 4th, 2022, our country is divided. Perhaps at, as it, at, it is as divided as it has ever been. Is it really that different from the first July 4th? We are still killing each other for the moral and religious high ground. Over 400 years as an American nation, and we have forgotten today's gospel message. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your God in heaven. As a whole... We've done really well with that first part. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You see, the problem is, that's not what Jesus said. Love your, enemy and, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, that's what the Old Testament teaches. That's the world where the ancestors of the Jewish people were the ones who had the laws set against them. That's the world where women had no rights as human beings. That's the world where God's people 
were the ones enslaved. Jesus said, love your neighbors, but also love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Are we praying for the persecutors? Not just saying words for them, not hoping to convert them. Are we truly praying for them? Are we praying for them in the most elevated ways that we can, in a way that God can whisper thoughts into their ears and into our ears? Are we truly lifting them up in a way that blesses us and the other person? When we pray for another, when we truly ask God to touch that person and not to change or convert them, we will see that person or those people differently. Walls will crumble. Tensions will ease. Love and justice will become the focus. How do I know this? I know this because it's happened to me. I've been on the receiving end of this kind of prayer, and I have been changed. As many of you know, I am not a cradle Episcopalian. My theology, my thoughts on Scripture, tradition, and reason, all that has changed and shifted. And it's because people have said these kinds of prayers. My friend, when was the last time you lifted the person or people on the other side of the aisle from you up in prayer? When was the last time you spoke to God in a very intentional way, not seeking to change another person, but you prayed for them? You prayed for them because they are a beloved child of God and for no other reason except that. We are a people of common prayer. Our prayer is not a list of requests. We know that. Prayer is an occasion for understanding. In our prayers, we reflect. In our prayers, we focus. In our prayer, we express our deepest thoughts and emotions. As Episcopalians, in our common prayer together, we pray as we believe. When we make our common prayers together, we are changed and others are sustained. When we pray our common prayers, we become better. We become more the people that God has called us to be. Have we prayed for those who persecute us? For Jesus says this is how we become children of God. My friends, these are hard prayers to pray. These are the prayers that we must work at. These are the prayers that make us tired. These are the prayers that truly change, that grow and call us to do justice, to love kindness. These are the prayers that allow us to walk humbly with our God. Prayers that do justice. Prayers that love kindness. Prayers that help us walk humbly with our God. These are prayers, these are prayers of protest. Prayer that pushes back. Prayer that overcomes. My friends, this is what Jesus meant when he said, pray for those that persecute you. When we do this, when we pray for those persecutors, we cannot help. We cannot help but see those we pray for differently. You can't pray for someone as Jesus calls us to pray and see them as the same person. It changes us. It's only when we are willing to truly pray in this way for those who think differently, believe differently from us, that we can see them as a beloved child of God. Until we start saying these sorts of prayers, 
we will be divided. Until we start saying these sorts of prayers, we will be divided. We will continue to kill each other. We will continue to oppress each other. We will continue to be the persecutors. Until we pray for those who persecute us, we will continue to take rights and freedoms away from other people. Until we pray for those who persecute us, until we pray for those who persecute us as we pray for our own family, until we pray that way, we will not, we cannot see humanity as God sees humanity. So on this day, on the eve of July 4th, 2022, for whom and for what shall we pray? Continuing now on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand together and say the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. From God alone comes our salvation. On this Independence Day, let us pour out our hearts before the Lord in fervent prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unity of the church in the United States and for a life-giving share in the gifts of God, let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the whole world and for the prosperity of the human family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the safety of those who serve in the armed forces and the well-being of their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for an end to the, every threat to human life and for the elimination of hunger and disease, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the recovery of the sick and the relief of the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
for the blessings of good weather throughout these summer days and for bountiful crops. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the consolation of the dying and eternal life for those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find when, wherever we go, preserve Father Milton as he travels to Brazil, Ghana, and South Africa on his sabbatical. Surround him with your loving care, protect him from every danger, and bring him in safety to his journey's end. We pray to you, O oh Lord. The altar flowers in the church are given to the glory of God and in honor of our country's founding and gratitude for God's many blessings by Bruce and Ellen Lyon. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear our o Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious. O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
continuing now with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him 
being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Francis, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Proposed Communion Prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.